guys, welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Cayenne, and today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's actually a story time video, and this actually happened, I want to say, about two months ago. Um, it is basically this story about the time I woke up in the middle of the night to a man standing in my room. Um, I'm assuming he's watching me sleep. I did not learn his intentions. I don't think I ever will know what he was planning to do to me. But anyways, about two months ago, I woke up in the middle of the night to a man watching me sleep. So this is going to be the whole story on what led up to that because there's kind of like a whole background story. The way the story begins, it has to do with me losing money. So I'm a server at a restaurant, so every time I get off shift, I have cash in my purse. So on one occasion, I had brought home my cash from work, went out that night to the bars. Um, I had only purchased drinks with my debit card. I got, or the next day, I looked in my purse and um, about $60 was missing. I could have easily dropped it at the club. Someone could have grabbed it. So that one, um, I kind of just wrote off. Now, the second time I had got off my shift, I probably made like $80, went straight home, I stopped at a gas station, went straight home, woke up, and went straight back to work, and when I got to work, the money was gone. Uh, the $80 was just missing, it, I could have dropped it at the gas station, and at this point I was just getting really annoyed with myself, assuming that somehow this money was falling out of my purse. So I never thought anything of it until one night I decided that that happened over probably two weeks. So the next week I decided to go out with my friend again and this time she was she came over, my friend Allie came over and we were getting ready to go and I literally went in my purse and I was like, Allie, I have been losing my money like crazy. I'm taking this $80 out of my purse and cash and putting it on my counter. She witnessed me put it there. Um, so then we left that night, went to the bars and I locked my door. I didn't come home that night. I slept at uh, her house, I'm assuming. So I didn't come home that night came back the next day, um, my friend had been waiting on my porch because we were going to go to a spin class, so I frantically went inside, changed into my workout clothes, we went to the spin class, and then I came back to my apartment, remembered that I had put the money on the counter, and went to go look for it, and it was gone. The $80 was gone. Obviously, you don't want your first assumption to blame your friend, but that's, you know, your, she, I don't have many people over my apartment, and she was the only one who had come in. So obviously I told her the money was missing, I didn't blame her for it, but she said, I saw you put it there, that's weird, why would it be gone? My door had been locked all night. So at this point, I was pretty sketched out, I mean, honestly just frustrated that I had lost basically $200 of like the money I had worked for over the past like three weeks. So this kind of all like led up to my suspicions, but there was one night in particular that kind of changed everything. So. I think it was about two days after that night where the $80 went missing. I came back from wherever I was, dinner maybe. I know, <laughs> I swear to God, I remember this clearly. I locked my door because I remember I was sketched out, but all this money missing. So I locked my door, went to bed, woke up the next morning, approached my door and realized that it had been unlocked and it was a slightly opened. Like, it wasn't completely closed. So, this immediately, like, freaked me out. And, I mean, I remember going to bed and locking my door. So, the fact that my door was unlocked when I woke up, this was just, like, the last straw. Um, and, actually, I will put in an insert a clip of exactly how the door was left. Because, at that time, I had realized that this wasn't the first time my door had been left like that. And, I will admit, I am, like really lazy. I do not lock, I did not lock my door every night um, before these events. Um, so I always assume that my door being like slightly open, it must have been the wind, something like this, but I'll show you. I'll insert the clip now and you'll be able to see there's no way this door could have been open unless someone physically turned the knob and pushed it. So this is my front door and the way it was left was like that. The times that I noticed, so you can see like it lets in a little bit more sunlight and there's no way it would have gotten to this position. Like you can't pull it open. You have to completely pull down and do that. So that's how I know it like wasn't the wind. So 
from that point, after I like started pulling on it, I realized that someone must have a key to my, my apartment, somehow was breaking in. Um, so I immediately contacted my leasing office the next day because they were closed on that Monday. So Tuesday, they were back in the office, they changed my locks that day, gave me a new key. So I thought everything was fine, locked my door, and I actually went out um, two days later on a Thursday. So I went out to the bars with my friend. Honestly, we drink a lot. I got back, we were in an Uber together, I remember this all. We stopped at my place where I got out and went into my bedroom. Uh, so I, I mean, after I got my lock change, I made a habit of locking my doors. So, but I was also drunk, so I will admit that I could have easily not have locked my doors. Anyways, I was honestly pretty drunk that night, and um, all I, I do remember up to the Uber ride and getting home. From then, I it's kind of a gray area because I did start. Th I know I started throwing up from drinking too much. Don't drink too much, kids. Up <laughs> and like somehow managed to get myself in bed. So this was like an area where I was just passed out. I was just really, really drunk and just was sleeping it off. Now this story is kind of iffy. I really don't even know if this part of the story happened, but I have to include it just because it's. I mean, it's just crazy. So I was passed out alone in my bed, and in the middle of the night, I felt as though someone was touching me sexually, like down there <laughs> um and i was just at a point i don't know if you've ever been this tired or drunk where you just like feel something happening but you just like can't even bother to open up your eyes i didn't like i didn't even bother to open up my eyes and turn to see if i was imagining this or someone was really there so then i had like gone back to sleep i passed out again and i heard a man's voice and he said, is it okay if I leave now? And I felt the sensation of waking up like my eyes opened to a man sitting on the end of my bed. And this man was slim, about my age, blonde hair, like I had made out details of his face so it, it seemed real, like I remember feeling the sensation of waking up. Now when this happened, I was drunk so I was really confused I didn't know if it was real if it was a dream because I came home alone and unless this man just wandered into my apartment I definitely did not invite him into my apartment from when she dropped me off I walked maybe 20 feet to my apartment door and <laughs> threw up and went to bed so there's no way I had brought this guy home from the bars whoever it was and I've never brought someone home from the bars so I don't know I just knew I did not bring him home had no idea who this guy was or if he was even real Anyways, I was just kind of in shock. I wasn't panicked. Um, I was just in a state of confusion. So I remember saying yes. And he, I remember him getting up from my bed and walking to my front door. I remember getting up and following him through my kitchen like a few steps to watch him. To, I'm pretty sure I was following him to make sure I locked the door behind him. Now, when I got up to follow him out, I blacked out again. So then all I remember is the next morning, I woke up, I looked, checked my door, it was locked. So I really do have honestly no clue if that's real. I pray to God that it wasn't real because that means someone basically was sexually assaulting me while I was like passed out drunk. So I hope it wasn't real, but I had to include it in the story just in case, I mean, it did happen in my mind even if it was a dream. It was three to four days later, I was asleep in my bed, and at this point I had made it, I had made it a habit to lock my door like religiously because I was so like freaked out. So I was in bed one night and the guy who I was calling at the time, calling, the guy who I was seeing at the time was calling me. I was at 2.30 in the morning, he was like at the bars and decided to call me when he was leaving. And I'm a very light sleeper, so like the vibration of my phone like can easily wake me up sometimes. I what my sticky nipples are like falling off because I'm sweating. <laughs> so I had woken up from his phone call, um, and um, I'll show you a clip right now. But I I lay on the left side of my bed and I woke up and saw a man standing not at the end of my bed, but on the right side of my bed by my kitchen door. 
So he was in my room on the side of my bed and it was pitch black. I have blackout curtains. So all I saw was the figure of this man. He was big, um, like I want to say he was like muscular, very tall, at least like 6'1", six, 6'2", six, but I, all I saw was his figure. Obviously I was startled and I was sober this time. I woke, I woke up, saw the man, and immediately I believe I screamed, get the f*** out! That's all I remember saying and for some reason it was my instinct to hop out of bed and start chasing him. So when I screamed, he obviously was startled because he was not expecting me to wake up. I'm, I tell you this, I do not know what his intentions were, why he was in my room, if he was just watching me sleep. Either way, when I screamed, he got startled, my sticky nipple just fell off. <laughs> startled and he immediately started running towards the door. At this point, I had gotten up and I was chasing him out my door. I have no idea, like the adrenaline just something told me to get up and chase him. So he ran out my front door and I immediately slammed it behind him, locked it. And the reason why I know the phone call woke me up because I was at the front door and I looked at my phone and it was the guy I was seeing, he was, he was still calling me. So I answered the phone and I said, there's someone in my apartment. And I, I forgot what he said back, but all I know is he said like, hang up and call 911. So I hung up, immediately called 911 and the officers were at my door in like four or five minutes. Um, so once they got here, they took fingerprints, asked me questions, asked if anything was missing, which at this point I had gone in my purse, and there was about $30. The purse I have is a Rebecca Minkoff purse. It's the one with like the five zippers on the front and then the main pockets um, on the top. The main pocket was unzipped, hanging um, on my key holder right by my front door. Um, so. The $20 or $25 that was in there is where he clearly took the money from because it was already unzipped. He did not check the front pockets because I had $400. Like, thank God he did not check the front. I'm assuming because he didn't want to make noise that he didn't want to unzip it. So he did also take another $25. So this f***ing guy owes me like $250 right now. My cameras, my laptops, he never took any of those things. He strictly took cash. Um, and that just makes me assume that he wasn't really there to take materialistic things. Like, if the cash was there and convenient for him to take, he would do it. But my, like, guess is that he was there more to, like, watch me sleep or something, like, of that sort. Kind of like a creepy thing. At this point, I had called my best, one of my good friends. Um, it was, like, 3 in the morning and I asked if she, she could come pick me up. She had, like, already been out going to, like, pick up her boyfriend so they came by and got me. So then she took me back to her place and I like had work the next morning, I think at like 8 in the morning. I could not sleep. It was so difficult for me to fall asleep at night. The weird thing is I did not cry. I was, I think I was just in shock. And then the next morning I went to work on maybe like an hour of sleep. I just like, I could not sleep. It didn't, I don't know, none of this really hit me until maybe two days after the shock wore off and I just started like bawling my eyes out on the way home from work and since after that happened I would never come there goes my nipples again <laughs> like this before or at least I dreamed I'm not sure if that's real still um, but one thing that like assured me that this was actually happening and he was actually in my apartment was the fact that the door was open I was sober I got out of bed chased him and he ran to the door where he then the door had I'm assuming had been like left a little bit open because he just he didn't have to pull the handle he just grabbed the side of the door and flung it open on his way out where he like went straight down the stairs of my apartment building so when i ran up and chased him the door was already open for me to close and there's no way that in my like mind i was sober that i would have imagined this ran to the door turned the door opened it and then closed it again imagining some guy was there so that was the thing that 
really convinced me that this was real and it happened and even though I had dreamt this experience in the past that this time it was real and he was actually there. So since that happened, my friend was kind enough to let me stay at her house for a couple weeks until I felt comfortable or figured out some kind of solution or heard from the police. Um, so I was staying there and anytime I would come back to my apartment, I would either one, bring a friend with me and two, I would immediately grab a knife and circle around my apartment before I felt even a little bit at, at ease. I would also set booby traps. I would put like, um, like shampoo bottles behind my door, um, like all this stuff to see like if he, if someone had opened the door while I was gone to make sure um, that it wasn't moved uh, when I would go back and like check the traps, I guess. I don't know, I was just really paranoid. So I could have pursued some kind of like lawsuit to break my lease, to let me leave the apartment, which would have involved moving all my stuff, even though I had like just gotten settled. Um, another option was to get a security system, so that is actually what I ended up doing security system installed I have a camera now and then I can set I can watch the camera on my phone I can set alarms there's sensors on my windows and my doors at this point I have no clue how he got in my apartment it if he has like a key the master key to this apartment complex but all I know is I got my locks changed and he still got in also they did do the fingerprints on the door and there were no matches that came back so that is basically the gist of it. Um, some things that have happened since then. Um, there have been multiple occasions at night around like 2 to 4 a.m. where I've heard somebody trying to open my door. Um, luckily I had my boyfriend sleeping over at that time and he would get up and check. Um, one night the alarm was set so he didn't actually open the door to see if anyone was out there and that was the night where we both heard the door trying to be open. Obviously he was trying to comfort me, told me that it was probably someone drunk, not knowing where they go, but my apartment building is very small. There's only, I want to say like 30 units. There's a gate code to get in. So I don't know, it just wasn't likely to me that it was just a drunk person stumbling to the wrong apartment. Okay. There is no resolution to the story. I really don't know who it was. All I know is really really scary for me traumatizing and at the same time I was watching all of Tana Mojo's um, stalker videos so that was kind of getting into my head and this is not as extreme case but obviously my mind was wandering to all those places like having no idea like what this all was all about and who this guy was Anyways, although the story is kind of weird, I think it's kind of interesting to hear people's stories, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you want to hear more story times, I'm going to be doing one video. Now that it's 2017, I'm going to be uploading one video a week, so be sure to subscribe. Um, some other story times I'm thinking about doing um, would be one time someone hacked into my Snapchat and released my nude pictures online, so I could tell you about that. I also have a good... Uh, cheating boyfriend story where my boyfriend cheated on me with my neighbor so if you guys want to hear those uh, let me know in the comments I will also be doing other beauty fashion and other related videos like that also if you guys have any crazy stories please leave them in the comments I think it's interesting to hear about luckily I wasn't harmed at all and um, I can't even imagine the like emotional impact it would have had on me if I was thank god I startled him and he ran out Okay, so now I'm just starting to ramble, but thank you guys so much for watching. Um, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, like I said.